I'm exhausted, but we are not shutting this show down until this truck, the rear end of this truck, moves up and down like a stripper in the land. <laughs> very tight schedule black truck is pretty much ready for florida that's what we're getting ready for is the florida truck show down in orlando florida black truck good to go however we are going to be installing a whole bunch of everything we got some stuff for the trailer some stuff for the first gen what we're going to be focusing on today is the mega cab we'll unbox this stuff for you guys inside because it's freezing cold out right now but we have some good old airlift stuff something that i have been wanting to put on to the mega cab for a very long time last piece of the puzzle here and also the first piece so we got a bunch of steel all powder coat black i have no idea what these parts are quite yet uh, i think that's some kind of frame mount good old air lift air bag i think there's a 7500 kit or not yeah 7500 xl extra large and wanted to put these bags on it for a very long time ever since i bought it haven't really done that yet our last trailer only weighed like 5,000 pounds plus we weren't hauling two trucks now we are hauling two trucks and the trailer itself weighs like 7,500 pounds or something like that a lot more weight on the bed of the truck this year compared to last year airlift really takes care of you little polished compressor up in there if you can see that really really sweet setup all right so we are starting with the basics we're taking off the wheels and tires pretty much we have free range up underneath there we're going to start with the shackles the shackles i almost guarantee it are going to take the longest out of everything i've done a bunch of shackles on the dakotas because they all rust out and you got to replace the shackles whatever those are a pain however i'm really hoping that these come apart way easier here is the drop shackle as you can see the wide part is where the uh the leaf springs attach to and then the red part well the red bushing part is where it connects to the actual truck so this drives me nuts all this surface rust and stuff i the, when i bought this truck it was absolutely spotless you guys know that now i've driven it for two winters and this is what we're dealing with next year it's all getting powder coated so i'm not too worried about it. but up in here that good old leaf spring shackle after we take it i'll show you guys but that's what we're working with pretty much gonna bring up the torch and get to it pretty much just have to torch this nut up in here to break this loose. shackle up in there uh, she looks spicy compared to the rest of the truck we are going to start on the second one over there on the driver's side but the passenger side one is done we have to take off the exhaust and we're going to leave that off until the bags are on there after we get the driver's side shackle on we are going to i think we're just going to test fit the rims and see how the truck sits because i'm really excited to see how this truck sits after after being reverse level i'm I've been wanting to do that for a long time, so. Specialties are back on. Truck is reverse leveled again. So last year we did the typical reverse level that pretty much a lot of people do, uh, the easy route, which is just flipping the blocks on the bottom of the leaf springs up on top of the leaf springs to fill up the U-bolts and it lowers the truck down about an inch, inch and a half. So we did that last year with hopes or, or plans to raise the lift with a two inch leveling pot to smooth the truck out. Over the course of the year, we didn't end up doing that. I didn't want the front end that high up. That's what we did with my black truck a couple of years ago. Uh, we did three inch lift up front, reverse level the rear, and she sat flush. I always regretted not going lower with that truck when it was in that state. So that's what we ended up going with on the mega cab. Completely stock up front, no suspension, no springs, not yet. That's staying stock, that is stock height up front. So whatever your truck is stock, that's what that is stock. Rear. We did the reverse level with the blocks on top of these springs to fill up the U bolt, which lowered about an inch and a half. And we just put on the, the lowering shackles, what you guys just seen us do, which lowered another probably inch, inch and a half. That is what she looks like. She sits so nice. Now it does sit up a little bit higher in the rear still. That is mainly because the rear tires are like 
perfect. Tires are on the front of the truck right now. We wore them down pretty, pretty good. I'd say about down to about 60% tread, but the rear ones right now, we're on the front and they're still at like 90%. So there's quite a bit more tread on the rear than there is the front. That's why it still has a little bit of lean. Other than that, she should be pretty well rounded. She sits pretty, pretty nice. It is now 9.30 at night. We start at two and we haven't even touched the air set. I guess two o'clock in the morning. Hopefully, hopefully it goes smooth. But I'm really excited about this whole setup. So we got our two bags here. Good old air lift. Load lifter 7500 Ultimate, I think. I think that's what it says. Load lifter 7500 Ultimate XL. We got the big boy. Gorgeous, gorgeous pump. This is, it's got the wireless receiver so you can, it's all Bluetooth off your phone and stuff like that. People cheat out, run an air valve to like in your back bumper, drill a hole or whatever. So you can just like fill it up with air whenever you want. Uh, whenever it's convenient for you. I didn't want to search for a gas station or wait till we got back home to fill the truck back up with air or the bags back up with air. I decided to spend, obviously, a couple hundred dollars more and buy the actual compressor set up here. It's all polished. I would say this is going to be 100% worth it down the road. A typical airbag setup would run you about five, 600 bucks. Uh, maybe even less if you go with a cheaper brand. I didn't want to cheap out on the bag since we're going to be hauling some serious weight. I think you could probably even get bags with it just a line run straight out your rear bumper for probably like two, two fifty. If you really want to go that low, hauling as much weight as we are. Plus, I like quality products. I don't like cheaping out on a bunch of stuff, especially something that will dramatically make a difference. Now, unbox all this stuff it is mostly unboxed. We're going to run through some instructions. This is a full bolt-on kit, supposedly. Excited to get it on. But we have a load to pick up tomorrow. And yeah, this is our air setup that's just laying here. I'm going to get to work. I might explain to you guys a little bit. But for the most part, you guys are going to be on time lapse. So enjoy my struggle. or something so we've been up here working on this truck for about two hours like an hour and 15 minutes of solid working airbags are completely on we of course haven't installed the compressor yet or the control module or any of the wiring or airlines or anything like that but the actual airbags are on and i mean they look good i have not lowered the truck down yet but this is what they look like up underneath there uh nice tight airlift everything fits great honestly I don't know how else you would do it. I'm just saying this triple U-bolt action thing, U-bolts over U-bolts, uh, kind of weird. Not my favorite thing in the world, but whatever. Now that you guys seen the airbags, we are going to lower the truck down. They'll have all the wiring, all the plumbing, all the, uh, we still have to put the compressor and stuff on the truck, but I'm gonna lower it down. We got the wheels secured. All eight lugs are in, all the rims. Test fit here, uh, bags look pretty, pretty beefy up underneath there to add a little bit to the suspension obviously it's not for you know looks but uh it does add to the looks thankfully so here we go it's hard to twist with my hand oh just going down everything looks pretty good so far lock is down back is down truck looks good bags are slightly compressed uh, they're not over compressed. They are pretty much maxed out though saying that we lowered the truck earlier A lot of things that you see on a lot of like larger show trucks or even sometimes lower trucks like this uh, People put the bags on there wrong and they sit sideways and you get this cocked looking airbag and it's not lining up uh, Thankfully, we don't have that issue right now. So that's really what I was worried about. I'm assuming that's airline Yeah, our battery terminal connection uh, Airline and airline I, th I think this is airline, yeah. Okay, so we got three things of air. One, electrical, that's a remote for the winch. And then uh, we got our good old compressor here, polished compressor. Thing looks absolutely gorgeous up in there. It's a little dusty and dirty, but. Bag installation, done, checked off the list. Uh, I'm gonna film the, the compressor installation for you guys. Uh, but as far as running the airlines and electrical and stuff like that, 
Uh, I don't want to bore you guys, and plus it's a, it'll be a pain to film, so you guys are just going to have to suffer without that. Hopefully, next clip that you see of me talking, we are lowering the truck up and down with our little fancy dancy remote over here uh, that will break out as soon as everything is working. So. I think it's like 3.45 in the morning. Um, great news. Uh, it's done. I'm a little tired. It's all right. We've had later nights. The air is done and on. I have not tested it out yet. We're going to test it live for you guys right now. Lines ran to the back to the bags. The electrical ran to the battery. Presser and receiver all hooked up, wired up nice, and as clean as I could get it. I'm no professional, but you have an airline right there. Um, other than that, you can't really see any airlines. It's kind of tough to see up underneath there. Just know that I made it as clean as I possibly could. I'm sure people have done it better, but I doubt it. I'm exhausted, but we are not shutting this show down until this truck, the rear end of this truck moves up and down like a stripper in Atlanta. You gotta download an app and hook up the remote controller and then she should be good to go. I know this is no feat of engineering and it's pretty common overall, but I, I am proud to announce after over two years of ownership with the good old Mega Cab here that we have finally successfully done some test runs and completed the onboard air wireless system from Airlift. This thing is sick. So it took a minute to get the uh, controller working. The phone the app still isn't working. I don't really know what's going on with that. Kind of a janky setup to be completely honest. Now it has a default setting of five PSI. That's as low as we can go. We can't go to zero. It, it, it wants to keep five PSI in the bags all the time. Right now we got it set at 50 PSI for uh, preset two. All right, okay, I guess it's 20. It's slow, but you can hear the compressor. We'll raise it to 50, because we just had it at 50. But see how it truck looks about leveled right now? Those bags will take that rear end of the truck way up. You can see it moving. This isn't no showboat air setup, you know, that you see it show full, full bag suspension side to side. This is for practical use. Is at 50 psi in the bags. Uh, you can see that has major rate going on here. Huge gap in the rear. You don't really want to take it over 50 pounds just because we put the lowering shackles on. I don't want to, I don't know if it hurt anything, honestly. I just don't want to stretch out those leaf springs and, and risk damaging something pretty much. So, 50 psi is pretty much as high as I want to go right now without a trailer on, just in case it hurts the stock suspension. I, it won't, but I just be safe, whatever. Bags are capable up to 100 psi, so we're not even we're halfway there. We're gonna go ahead and drop it for you guys. This is the most exciting part right here. Go on to the controller right here. Press any button. Wait the controller up once again. We got a preset one for five psi. Down she goes. see that the truck is pretty much leveled once again. All right, we gotta turn the truck off because she's almost out of fuel and we're just baking this garage. You have no idea how exciting this is. Watching this video looking to do this, I, I can't say I recommend it yet, right? Haven't tested it out. Good news is we get to test it first thing tomorrow morning. That's obviously, good. you guys are gonna be able to see that before the end of the video, so just stick around. We'll do some hauling. Hang on. This is absolutely freaking sweet. Deja vu, but we are back exactly where you guys seen us hauling last. The 
same spot, picking up the same truck. Uh, saying that this isn't necessarily a hauling video, it's more, more or less about the airbags on the truck. Got one truck on there plus the Diamond C. Bags are sitting at about 40 psi. So that's high, low. I haven't really figured that out yet, but the truck's sitting pretty good. Uh, it's been riding really good the whole way here, no issues yet. Diamond C's hauling good, Mega Cab's doing great, and uh, pretty much just gonna go drop this truck off and pretty much it. All right, guys, so I didn't want to leave this video off. Uh, going into it blind and not giving an honest review of how the airbags went. We just got back from Orlando truck meet and uh, as you can see everything is still intact everything's good to go. If you haven't watched that series go watch it because the way that I have everything uploaded right now I almost guarantee it is all messed up and I want to give you guys an honest reaction about the airbags that we put on the truck. Behold I, I assume let's see we got a 7400 pound trailer 5200 pound truck 6500 pound truck so you guys do the math on that I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of 18,000 pounds right we'll round up to about 19,000 pounds not of course on the axle or on the airbags but total we were hauling about 19,000 pounds give or take. Airbags held up good uh they do raise the rear end of the truck up with no load on there so that is an issue that we're gonna have to find out or fix down the road i do eventually want the truck to sit flush level with the front the bags have a mandatory five psi in them at all times that's just what airlift does it won't let you go below five psi just to keep you know the bags the air in the lines bags full whatever empty trailer I would say I would recommend about 20 PSI with this setup. That's why I ran one truck. We ran about 40 PSI and we were running 50 PSI in the whole system with this big of a load on there. We ended up raising that to 60 to 65 PSI just because it, A, it rode a lot better and B, as you can see how the truck is right now, I mean, it's, it's almost dead flush. Only to ride good, but also look good going down the road, which is exactly what we wanted overall. A little handy dandy remote here. Run. As you can see, we got 60 psi on there. That's what we ran the whole trip to Florida and back, about 2,400 miles total. We'll go ahead and dump her out here. I don't obviously don't recommend doing this, of course, uh, with a loaded trailer going on the road. There's no sense. Uh, why else would you have the bags on there? You you had the bags on there to do not that. So I don't recommend that. Of course, dump her out to five psi. tape measure around me but i would say it crushes about an inch or two that's at five psi obviously i'm not going to show you all the way up to 60 actually i might because i'm so plucking it <laughs> okay so we're going to raise up to 60 psi we'll raise about an inch or two and of course if you left it like that if you left it at five psi the whole time that you're driving the truck would look like it was struggling of course you're hurting your, your lace springs you're hurting you're not helping the bags at all you're definitely not helping any part of the suspension and plus it's rough ride truck leveling out a little bit right now it's kind of hard to see because it's so slow on camera but no real reason to go up to 100 psi if you had a skid loader or a, let's say a box of rebar or something extremely heavy i use that as a very specific example but i've been in that situation before so if you have something extremely heavy on the tongue there then i could rec i would probably recommend going with a higher psi 80 90 of course you don't want to go up too high where you're risking blowing lines or blowing bags or whatever or nothing like that you don't want to hurt the system so i was assuming you'd run with something extremely heavy or like a piece of machinery or steel on the front stuff like that That's pretty much where we're going to leave off with this video guys like the content like comment subscribe i'll see you in the next one and yeah it's pretty much that see you